again. Uh, I'm Paul from the South Physics Observatory. Uh, today we're going to set up a different type of telescope. Um, we have it in this uh, we have it in this Pelican case here. So this is how we like to store all of our stuff, just because we travel around with it a lot. So we like to protect it as, mu as much as we can. So today we have a Skywatcher EQ35 that we're going to be setting up and a 8-inch Celestron uh, schmidt Cassegrain. So we're going to go through the steps to set this up properly and uh, hopefully you get to learn something from it. Okay, first we're going to start with the tripod, just like normal. It's one of the first things you always want to get set up first. So just like other ones, it has an N on here specifying north. Um, some of these are kind of dependent on that for not only their positioning but for their weight balance so you want to be sure to note that. We're going to set it up a little bit higher. Just going to extend the legs out. You can do this with more people than one or you can just do it on your own depending on who you have with you. Once again, don't tighten too tight. Don't leave it too loose. All right, so this time I'm gonna show you how to set north by using a compass. So this compass is one of those old styles that you see a lot, has a bubble level, that's important. So you wanna make sure that bubble is right in the middle. That way you can get an accurate um, position to north. This little moving ring here, one's designed to set magnetic north. Here where we are, it's about 11 degrees offset. So you want to move this 11 degrees-ish to that point. So what you'll do, you'll get it set to where the north arrow here lines up with that. And then the point that you set right here is actually is lined up with your true north on your position. And then you can use this little window here to find something in the distance to do an alignment with. That way if you're doing something like a tripod, you can use that as a, an alignment point. So we have a tree across the street that is lined up with north almost exactly, so I'm gonna use that to align my tripod. And you don't necessarily want to set this on here because if you have metal, it can throw it off by just a little bit. So you, this one is actually off by quite a bit just by putting it on the metal. So raising it up off of there and away from it corrects for that. Okay, so now we're going to set the spreader bar up really quickly. So we're going to take the bottom nut off. Just loosely put it on there. You don't want to put it on tight yet, just because you have to set the uh, mount body up. So we'll do that next. Now we're going to set the uh, mount onto the tripod. So I'm going to get the mount out of here. Make sure the azimuth knobs are out a little bit and put that on here like that. Balance is all right on there, but you want to make sure that it doesn't fall off. And then you want to tighten up the upper knob, which sets the bar into the bottom of the mount there. Okay, once you have that, loosen this down. We can get those onto that. Put them back up. Fairly tight, but not too tight, because you don't want to break the bars here. And wiggle the legs a little bit, and then tighten a little bit more. Okay, so next we're going to put the counterweight bar in here, so we can get that out of here. Keep this under the optical tube. Make sure that it doesn't fly all over the place. Get the 
bar here. And that just screws into the bottom of there. And keep this a little bit farther up. Tighten it up there and then tighten this. Make sure it's not too wobbly there. So a lot of these bars here have a little set screw here. Keeps the counterweights from falling off. You'll want to take that off so you can get the counterweights on. Get your first counterweight. I like to go with the thumb screw up here. That way you can sit just a below the bottom, just a hair, if you need that little extra space. Set that one on, and then you'll want to do the second one. And then you want to put your set screw back in, in case you're playing with these and it decides to slip off, this will catch it so it doesn't fall on the ground, hit your foot or hit the telescope or something. We have to level the mount. Um, just because that is very important in making sure that it tracks properly. And so I'm going to just lower some of these as needed. Tighten that back up. So now what we want to do is we want to put the optical tube onto the mount. You want to make sure your set screws are pulled out just a little bit. That way you can get the mount on. Get your telescope tube and then slide it on. If your set screws aren't out far enough, it won't go up. So you got to make sure they are. Once it gets up there, go about that far. Set the large one first and then the small one. You want to make sure that your azimuth knobs are tight up against the, the north bar here. That way it doesn't wiggle back and forth too much and make sure those are tight. All right, so now we're going to set up the optical tube with eyepieces. You can stay up there. We need our diagonal first and our visual back. goes in there, tighten both those down, loosen this one, and then put an eyepiece on there. You want to do this before you counterbalance just to make sure you have the right weight on there. I'm going to put our finder scope on. Now we're going to put our computer on. We're going to put it on this leg here, the one closest to the input for the RA and deck motors. I'm going to take our hand paddle mount and wrap that around here on the opposite leg. Okay. We'll take our Hand paddle, put it in place. And we got our hand paddle cable. Hook it into the bottom of the hand paddle. And then into the hand control plug in. So now we want to add the motor cables. Some cables are longer than others on some telescopes. This one they're the same. So start by going into the computer. And then this does make a difference. I'm going to go into your RA in. And then from your 
deck out to your RA, or I'm sorry, to your declination in. And there you go. That's how easy it is to set the computer up. Okay, so now we can balance the telescope now that all the weight is on there. All right, so we're going to start by loosening the RA axis and checking the counterbalance to see if it goes one way or the other more than the other. This one is good, but I'll show you what it looks like when it is not. So it drifts a lot more that way, comes to a stop fast that way. So that means you want to raise the counterbalance just a little bit until it seems to stop equally in both directions. Okay, that's good right there. So then relock your RA and now we'll do the declination. So loosen your declination knob. And that one's actually already set and didn't even need to touch that. So one thing that you can do for future reference is, is if this is your only setup, you can actually mark little marks on each of these spots using some kind of white marker or something. That way you know exactly where to go every time. It makes it a lot easier down the road and a, lot, a little bit faster.